Hey, hey. So, welcome to my channel. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Laura, aka PerplexQT. If you do like what you see, make sure you go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. And hit the thumbs up, because if Jonathan comes in, he's going to tell you to hit that thumbs up. Because he's my thumb up person. So, what's up, voices? Hey, Blue Rabbit. No yelling. This is not what people think it is, and I'm going to explain. Hey, Carson, but I do have to do this in two parts because I got to pick up Phoenix from work at 9 o'clock. So I wanted to kind of get the premise down before I started, before we, like, really got into it. Um, I can I don't know about bourbon joy. I can definitely get vanilla. So let me also say that... Um, I'm trying to make the website easier. I know somebody had a really hard time this morning trying to order something. So I'm, I did a little stuff to it. I wasn't home most of the day, but I did a little things to it, tweaked it a little. I hope I made it easier. And on the mobile version, though, something is happening on the mo mobile version where it's not showing all the products. So I'm going to have to rearrange stuff. I just haven't had time to do it yet. So I apologize, but on a computer you could see everything so tonight patreons knew this i think i told members i don't remember but i actually am starting a new case today it was a trial that is starting today what was interesting about the trial starting today is it's all about somebody having a breaking point and when they get to their breaking point well, for some of you know, I hit a breaking point today and I went absolutely apeshit and I have no apologies for it because you can't push somebody and push someone and push someone and push someone for years and they finally snap and they lose their shit. Um, you can't really blame them. So again... For those of you that didn't see it, I deleted the video. Of course, haters have it, so whatever. But it really got me thinking in conjunction with this case, this trial that started today. Because enough is enough. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, you get to a point where somebody just lies and lies and lies and convolutes things or twists things or tries to make things um, sound a lot more, a lot worse than it was, or it takes something personal of my life and spins it into whatever they want it to sound like. You know, it's shit like that, that any normal, reasonable person is going to get pushed when this happens over and over and over and over. So... People think it's all fun and games until somebody gets murdered or until somebody gets shot. But even the normalest of person, or I'd like to say the best of us, everybody can have a breaking point. And everybody gets to a point that they're going to snap. Doesn't matter who you are. So the problem is that too many people don't take responsibility for before the person snaps. So they just think they can do whatever they want and then boom, nothing's going to happen. And then when something does happen, they play victim. There's an old line that is so true. And that line is, don't, now I forgot how it goes, um, Oh my God, I totally forgot. Something about being a victim that, you know, stop being a victim to the drama that you created. So if you're going to push someone and lie about them and lie about them and lie about them and again, convolute stories or make things worse than it was, don't be surprised when that person does it back to you after ignoring you over and over and over and over and over. When they finally snap, Welcome, Tracy, or I see you remember for two months. Woot, woot. When somebody finally snaps, you can't blame them. And honestly, I have no apologies. P 
people need to start looking at their own behavior, which caused somebody to say some of the things they say. Because when the person being targeted has really done nothing in the first place to warrant all of the attacks or anything that's said, then move on. And when it comes to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? When it comes to the case I'm going to talk about, you're going to see the similarities. And I'm going to play some 911 calls. And before I really get into the case, I want you guys to hear the 911 calls. So, and when you reach your limit, look them square in the eye. And that's the other thing. Let me say this too, though. It's funny that you say that, Blue Rabbit. That, And I'm glad you brought up a good point. You know, personal boundaries mean everything. And if you have personal boundaries, people can't break those personal boundaries. People may not want to break those personal boundaries. But one thing that I've noticed is that all the people that taunt you and taunt you and taunt you and taunt you and taunt you. It's almost like it's an addiction to them. Like they can't stop no matter what they try. They're the first ones to, you know, talk about you. They're the first ones to call 911. They're the first ones to call whoever. And it doesn't matter what class you are. It doesn't matter if you're a high class, trailer trash, rich, poor, it doesn't matter. Everybody gets stressed and everybody, I'm sorry, nobody knows where someone's breaking point is. Nobody knows what someone's going through that day, unless you actually know. But if it's someone that you're a coworker, you are online, doesn't matter no matter what, nobody knows what somebody else is going through. So you can lie about somebody, but maybe that person just lost their friend. Maybe that person just lost their parent. Maybe they're, that person just got into a hit and run and killed two people. You don't know what somebody's going through. And you don't know if somebody's mentally ill, if somebody's not mentally ill, if somebody is, you know, suicidal, or if somebody is homicidal. You just don't know. So the fact that certain people just keep pushing buttons over and over and over and then act shocked when somebody reacts after a while, um, you're not a victim. No matter what the other person does, you're not a victim. That's my opinion. Because the original party will lie to cover their own ass so they don't look like they're targeting somebody. And an outsider may realize it, may not realize it. But the point is, don't, tar don't target somebody if you're not willing to have the kickback. Plain and simple. So... All of this translates into my life, but it also translates into a case I'm covering. So before I give you the true details of the case, I want you guys to hear the 911 calls, and I want you guys to give me your impression, and then I'll tell you more about the case, or the trial, I should say. Okay. So bear with me. It's only four minutes. Now, these calls go from the perpetrator to the victim, to the perpetrator, to the victim, to the victim, perpetrator, but I'm not going to tell you guys who's who and tell me what you guys think. And if you know the case and you know what's going on, shh, or if you're watching the trial, shh, hey, Ginger Locks. That's exactly right, Trish. I am very patient until it gets to the point of no return. And then I snap, and then I don't remember it 10 minutes later, and it is what it is. Sometimes I'll apologize, sometimes I won't. Yeah, this is a new case. It's really interesting. 
So that's why I want you guys to be like a blank slate. I know I put it in my description, but almost like a blank slate. And tell me what you think after you hear the 911 calls. Um... Now one up our three six one with the address of your emergency. Hi, Mar. Yeah. Four eleven West Mill Road for trespassers and the caller's horse barn. Go ahead, Michael. Yeah. Yeah. I own this place. I have some people who have been living on this place, and they they were told to not be in the horse barn after nine p.m. And they're in the horse barn. They're scumbags, and I want them warned. They have chased us out of our house, and I need this dealt with tonight. All right. That was four eleven West Mill Road, Washington yeah, Township, sure. at the horse barn. Tell me exactly what happened. There is a client, we have a horse stable, and I asked her to go home for the evening, and she won't leave the barn, and she's screaming at me. Disturbing the peace for the second time in three days. Okay, my partner, send help. Just stay on the line. I need some more information from you, okay? Thank you. Stay on the line with me. My name is Lauren. Your last name? Oh, I was home with Tanner. Sorry, Tanner, sorry. So tonight I called because last night, you're actually please go from the top of late. Today, I'll be in here... Um, I talked to them, the thing was fine. It was over like a Facebook post, a crazy situation going on, very complicated. But last night, at 3.15 in the morning, there was like a very, very suspicious looking vehicle that came in to the driveway going very slowly with a large SUV, and it was going very slowly. I texted, texted the barn owner. Right, are you calling about the suspicious vehicle now? Yes, it just came back. Okay, hold on. Were were weapons involved? You mentioned. Um, no. It, all that happened was this this, this this blacked out SUV with like, some guy smoking a cigarette in the front, who I've yeah. never seen before, except for last night at three fifteen in the morning, and we overheard them talking about like uh, getting guys to like hurt us, kill us, whatever. We, we told it to the officers this afternoon, and they know how we have this situation and everything. Are you or anyone else in danger right now? Am I okay? Say it again, am I what? Are you or anyone else in danger right now? We feel very much that we could be, seeing as though this happened the other night. Okay, uh, tell me exactly what happened. These people are on our place. They have been living in our house in one of the apartment units. They are clients here at our horse stable. The situation is getting worse and worse and worse. The police have been here twice in the last three days. They're nuts. They're stalking us. They've, they're harassing us. Last night there was a Facebook post, which is what this woman does. She's... Uh, 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 okay, anyway, so the Facebook post says, my split personalities are going to take over, and I am not in control of what they do. Uh, we are in fear for our lives. No, no, I understand, but what is going on right now? Are they, are they, are Nothing. They, that's why I'm calling you. I talked to a couple of my lawyer. He said, call them right away. Get something going. Uh, okay, um, are, are they there now? They're down at the house we own, which is which is a third of a mile from where we are. We're all holding up at the stable. We're under siege here. If they come up the driveway, I don't know what to do. This is not looking good. This is the third time, and I'm getting no uh, relief. No, no, I understand, sir. Um, I have a family. No, I, sir, I, I understand. Um, it, with a Facebook post said, everyone should be worried. I'm not responsible for anything my other personalities do when they're threatened. I may hide in okay, the hold, 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 hold on. Uh, I'm going to just paraphrase. So everyone should be worried. I'm not responsible for my behavior. For anything my other personalities do when they're threatened. That's insane, and we are in fear for our lives. From you. I, I was told that my... Uh, my daughter's in the landlord tenant dispute, and I got to call that she'd been shot. And you're the father of who? I'm the father of my daughter. You know, has horses on a barn there, and she's in a dispute with the barn owner. Okay, what's 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 her name? Um, her name? Yeah. Her name is Lauren. L a u r e n. Same last name as me. Tanarat. Hi, this is Mary. This is Mary Haskins Gray. I am at 411 West Mill Road where the shooting was yesterday. Okay. I'm sure you guys know everything that's been going on. I was told if I was scared or in fear of my life to call. We don't have an emergency yet, but Rob Goodwin and 
the father, Jonathan Kanerick of Lauren's, Lauren's father is up here. Um, they just made verbal threats to us that we're pieces of <laughs> They're going to take us down, that they're coming after Mary Haskell, okay. which is me. Okay, they're so coming I... after Justin Harden, and they're okay. going to go after Okay, hold on, I'm just one second. Okay, those were the 911 calls, and just tell me what you guys think listening to the 911 calls. Wow is right. It's been an interesting case, and he's fine, that, not he's finally, he's finally in trial. Sounds like she was reading that. Do you think he felt justified, like he was literally scared? Now, let me put a little spin on this. He is an Olympian um, contender. He runs a horse farm. He's extremely well-respected, or was extremely well-respected in the equestrian community. Um, Coffee, correct me if I'm wrong, he's been in a in the Olympics twice or once. I thought the guy sounded genuinely mad as well. I think he sounded upset. I think the cops were much nicer to her than to him. They were almost like squatting. He was training her and because he was so well respected, her and her boyfriend had moved into at one of the apartments. This is all on his property. And her and the boy her and the boyfriend kept taunting and taunting and taunting and taunting and taunting. And it got to the point where he called the cops dozens of times asking for help. And nobody was helping him. Nobody was taking it serious. You know, they didn't like they didn't take him serious enough to go there and do something. So it got to the point he didn't know what else to do and he shot both of them. He didn't kill them, thankfully. He didn't kill them, but in New Jersey, um a what you call it? Um, attempted murder, you can go away as long as you would for regular murder. you like, he may as well kill them. But he's been in prison for the last two years. Many experts think that he should see prison. I personally think it's self-defense. He's claiming now that it was self-defense, which everyone knew he was going to claim. But he got to a point where he felt scared for his life. What they're saying, though, or what I've heard is that he shot them twice, each shot each of them twice. Therefore, it's not self-defense, according to Jersey rules. So I don't think there's a stand your ground when they live on the property. And I don't know if Jersey has stand your ground. So, provocation needs to be in the act correct. Well, that's the thing. But he's saying that they provoked him, that he felt like he was in fear for his life. She then called the police and said that there was some strange guy hanging around, and she is in fear for her life. So you don't know who's who. But... I truly feel this was self-defense because I sit there and I think to myself, why would this man do this? Why would he just go try and kill a girl and her fiance? There's no reason for it. There's no reason for him to want to go kill these people unless it was kept provoking him and kept provoking him. And kept provoking him. And I believe he asked them to leave. And they said no. And they weren't leaving. And they were going at him even harder. And they were going at him even more. And they were 
like it got to the point where he felt like he couldn't leave his house. So um, where in Jersey? That I'm not sure. Um, uh, Washington Township. He had a horse farm in Washington Township. So the trial starts today. The judge is taking absolutely no shit. He does not like the defense team. He really doesn't. The judge was straight up. Um, but he, he's an Olympian equestrian. He is accused of shooting his training at his horse farm in Washington Township. 911 calls in the weeks before the shooting involve Barrison feeling harassed by his client and her boyfriend. So. New Jersey, of course. Now, that sounds like a Florida case. But I had told Patreons that I was definitely going to cover this case, this trial, even though I normally hate trials. But I just feel like it's one of those trials that, I don't know, so far it seems pretty good. Someone close to me threatened to seriously hurt me in close quarters. Best believe if I had a gun. Well, that's, that's the whole thing is... Um, uh, it's Long Valley, uh, Goldilocks. Um, so he had shot each of them twice in the chest following months of disputes between them, between him and her and her fiance. So she's 41. Her fiance is 45. They lived in a house on Barrison's farm at the time of the shooting. Officials have said the couple were engaged in a landlord tenant dispute who had agreed to let them live there while she was training. Uh, the relationship soured, leading to the first phone calls. There were six 911 calls placed from him in one week prior to the shooting. He said on one dispatch call, I am taking my life back. Well, that says a lot. So that's when he felt like he was stuck in his house. Shooting happened at a home on the, on the farm uh, early afternoon. Not like, you know, it happened in the middle of the night or the middle of the morning. It's happened middle of the afternoon, early afternoon. They were having a discussion outside the home on the property when Barrison shot her in the chest. He's accused of attempting to shoot Goodwin, but missed. Goodwin then tackled Barrison, breaking his arm in the process. Barrison was still pinned on the ground when police arrived. He did say, and you hear this in his arrest, that I had a good life. And Barrison told police as he was being arrested, because he did. He had a great life. There was, there's just no reason for this to happen unless somebody is pushed to that point. So I was right. He was a member of the 2008 Olympic equestrian team that competed in Beijing, and he coached a rider who won a bronze medal in the 2016 games in Rio de Janeiro. He has also won Olympic medals at the uh, won medals at national level. Lawyers on both sides have painted a protracted struggle between the two. With each side claiming harassment from the others, lawyers say Barrison have said in court that. Canarac harassed him and his family daily, refusing to move out of his home and asked and making him fear for his safety. In a civil suit filed by him, her, law her lawyer said Barrison harassed her for months and shot at her unprovoked. It is an interesting case. So it's really a he said, she said, and it's good that she's still alive. So they wanted to give him a plea deal that would have resulted in a 10 year sentence. He said, no, I'm not doing it. This was self-defense. And now he's facing 40 years if he found guilty of trial. So, all right. He is being held at Morris County Correctional Facility. There are 31,000 Facebook posts, videos, and other pieces of evidence from social media, um, as well as the pandemic shutdown of, oh, I forget it. I said that wrong, but there are, there's 31,000 Facebook posts that he submitted is that we're submitting as evidence. Now 
he, the judge said usually a trial is like a week or two. Judge said that he expects this to go at least a month or towards mid to end of April, depending on how both sides go. Cops were on today. I didn't, because I had to go to the doctor. I didn't hear all of it. But it, like I said, the judge is not happy at all. Judge was shutting him down. The, the volume of the trial sucks. You kept hearing the judge scribble. Um, but yeah, so now he's pleading not only guilty, uh, not guilty by reason of insanity and also self-defense. The experts have said there's no way that you can do, um, self-defense and insanity at the same time. So I don't know, but when I get back from getting Phoenix, I will pick this back up and I'll show you guys some of the trial and... That's it. So, who said they have multiple personality? Oh, that, he was saying it to her. He was saying it to the cop about her, that she's the one that posted this on Facebook. I just, you know, I heard that, Amanda. I just feel, honestly, like this is not fair, and this is self-defense. He did everything he was supposed to do, and then had a a brief lapse of a holy fuck moment, we all get them. We all get them. So I just think it's a lot more to be discussed. It, in a way, I can understand how they could go together. Oh, do you? And that's, and I'll open up the panel when I get back and we can discuss it more. Um, and coffee, I know you know the case, so if you want to come up and talk about it, you're more than welcome. Anyone has an opinion, they can come up and talk about it. But I just thought, you know, it was kind of, I wouldn't say ironic, but it was kind of odd that I had a breaking point today and from being pushed from lies to remembering that the trial for this case started today. So I, I just kind of thought it was weird. And Sandy makes it seem like he's admitting guilt in a way. I Well, I don't think he's denying that he did it. Um, I mean, as he did do it. That's not the issue. But the issue is, why did he do it? Did he have a brief moment of insanity? Is he clinically insane? No. Did he get pushed too far? Was he in fear for his life? I think the, the prosecution is going to try to say that that was all a setup and that he wasn't in fear. But then you have to look at motive. What would be the motive for him killing her? There is none. Whoops. There would be no motive that people, normal people don't go around thinking, let me go shoot somebody and spend the rest of my life in jail when I had a good life. So there's just, there's something missing. And that's why I said, this will be a really interesting trial and I'm excited for it because all the little questions I have will get answered. But on that note, I do have to hold on to your questions. I got to go get Phoenix. I'll be back on between 930 and 10. If you're not coming back, definitely go to Law and Crime and check out the trial today. You can even skim through it. I will answer all these questions as soon as I get back. Promise. I'll I got to cook them dinner when we get home. It's probably like quarter to 10. I'll be back no later than 10. You got my word. All right, so hold all your questions. You can check it out. It's uh, Michael Barrison, and it's in my description. So I'll see you guys with about an hour. All right, peace.